is Irik here from Boulder Road IO. This is a tutorial where I'm going to show you guys how to make a responsive video load bar with text that uh, changes based on the positioning of that load bar. This is what you see on YouTube and most video players. So there's a link in the description below to the protopy um, that you can go ahead and copy. So we're going to jump right in. Some of the things that we are using are a drag uh, mouse out function, detect function, and we're using one variable here. So let's go ahead and start from scratch here. All right, so the first thing that we're actually going to need to do here is set this drag trigger. Um, and in this, you're gonna notice here a couple things. Um, the layers that I have set up are the video player itself. This is a picture uh, background. Then there's the actions bar, which is this black bar here with the play button, the responsive timestamp, the total video time. <clears throat> then we have an event preview. There is a uh, time uh, for the slider to show the positioning here. And this picture, I haven't changed this picture to reflect uh, the changes on the thumbnail itself. You guys can do that with the chain function. And the last part of this is the load bar. So there's three parts to this actual prototype. It's the load bar, event preview, actions bar, and then the video picture itself. So let's go ahead and start with our drag function here. Um, we're going to tag this to the load slider here. Okay. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to detect whenever the uh, slider is moved here. And we're gonna go ahead and do a couple things. First is, we want to scale this red bar based on the positioning for the <clears throat> based on the positioning for the bar itself. The width of this um, this here is 900, so we're going to scale that to a width of 898. Because if you zoom in here, you'll notice the bar itself is. A little bit off center for the uh, slider. Um, then we're going to have two move functions here. One is for the actual slider itself, and that's one for one on the horizontal. Then we're going to do this for the event preview. So the event preview itself is in this whole container here, and um, we want it to move with the slider. So we're going to do horizontally here, and it's a one-to-one. -one. So now let's preview what we have. This should all move. Yeah, so we have the three moving. Now, there are no limits set, so we should set the limits for the um, right here. Limit to set. Let's do custom limit, custom limit, uh, slider, we're probably going to say three pixels, 897, and we'll do the same here, three pixels and 897. Let's preview that and see if it goes off the screen. No, nope. just enough. Okay, we'll put this uh, slider. A little bit more let's check the positioning here okay that would explain it we want the positioning to be center of the slider and that should fix that problem there we go doesn't go out of screen perfect so we have our drag functionality set now what we want to do here is the initial state of this preview is going to be zero opacity. So we want this to light up or um, go to full opacity when the slider moves, as well as when we leave the slider for it to go back to zero opacity. So first we're gonna do the detect 
and it's going to be the slider and we want to detect the X movement of the slider we're going to make the opacity of the event preview go to 100 so that basically means when the scene detects any X change on the slider the opacity of this uh, event thumbnail is going to go to 100 now we want the mouse out so if we mouse out of either this load container here or the event preview container, I want the opacity to go to zero for the preview itself. The reason we do the, um, we do the full container here is just because when you're dragging with your mouse, you can sometimes move outside of the load bar area. That's where we're including the both of those layers. So we're gonna say that goes to zero. Um, ease out, we'll do exponential at about 1.5 seconds. So let's see how that works. What we added here was a detect on drag because the initial state here is a zero opacity and this should bring the opacity of this thing up and then when we slide out it should go to zero just like that so we there we go now the last part here um let's actually make this zero seconds and just see if this it looks cleaner there we go yeah, we don't want any of the, um, we, we don't need the delay on the, the load. Okay, so that's good. Now what's left is the text, and this text part is tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable. You saw the variable that was there before. That's essentially what we're gonna call this. This is the slider x value. And this is for just this scene. I'll put the little debugger on so we can see it. So when we detect an X movement here on the slider, we want to actually assign that X value to the slider X value here. And it's going to equal the slider. Uh, well, actually this layer is called loads and then it's gonna be X. Okay. So now you can see that here, it's three to 897. So our total range of motion with the slider is 897 to three. So the total range of motion is 894. That's gonna be important when we actually make this formula here. Because what we're going to do is we need to assign the two timestamps here, which you can see, um, the 502, uh, this timestamp, it needs to change based on the position of this slider. So, the two things that we're going to change. First, let's start with this video preview time. And I'll change this opacity so you guys can see it. We're going to make this responsive. So, to understand how to make this responsive, there's a couple of things we need to review. First, uh, we have three questions to answer. What is the pixel range of motion or movement for the player slider? Well, it was 894 that we saw here from this. Uh, you know, the X value here is three and the upper range of the X value is 897. So. Total range of motion, 895 pixels. What is the length of the video clip? I arbitrarily said it's uh, 15 minutes and 17 seconds. So the total clip length in seconds is 917, and the current X value is assigned to this variable. So now let's go ahead and build our formula here. What we want to do is know the exact minute, the exact minute value and second value of this slider as we move. So to calculate the percentage of the video that is um, 
shown with the slider, what you do is you divide the x value of the slider by its total range of motion. So this is going to show you the percentage of the video that's complete. Now if we want to get the seconds of video complete, we multiply that percentage of video complete by the total seconds of the video clip. So let me just show you guys what that looks like here. When we do that and we input it into this formula here, let's make this a formula. When we do that, this is actually going to show us the total seconds complete. So you see how it's fractionally seconds? So this goes up to 920, which isn't exactly um, the total amount in seconds, but it's just, a, just right. So we can see that here, 920 seconds. Now what we need to do is we're going to divide that by 60 and we'll get the total fractional amount of minutes in the clip. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll paste that here. Okay. You want me to put this in parentheses? Divide that by 60. What's going on here? Oh, there's a space. Oh, I see. There we go. So let's put that in parentheses too. All right. So now. If I preview this, um, we're going to see the total fractional minutes. So this is 15.2 minutes here. Great. Now we want to turn that into the last leg of this is to actually build the total minutes here that will appear on the left side of the colon. So what we do to do that is this unit here is fractional minutes. So we apply the floor function in order to show the actual number of minutes that will appear before the colon. So let's go ahead and do that so that we can see the exact value here. Now we're going to see the actual minutes with no fractions here. So we have the first part of the timestamp complete. The second part of the timestamp complete is a little bit more complicated. So what we're going to have to do to calculate the, the seconds here uh, for the, the, the second half of the timestamp is to we're going to take the total number of seconds in the entire clip, which is uh, calculated using this, this, this function here. Then we're going to subtract that by the minutes uh, the, the number of seconds in the minute portion of the timestamp. And what this is going to do is it's going to leave us with the remainder of the seconds um, in the right hand side of the colon. And to finalize the formula, you add a seal, a seal function, which will give us the sealing uh, value because otherwise it would be fractional. I'll show you what that looks like here. So if I go ahead and take this and paste this into our formula, click enter and preview, now we're going to have the full timestamp. There's uh, not really an easy way to get it to show the uh, full two digits all the time, um, but this is about as good as you're going to get here with the timestamp. So you, now you can see it goes uh, completely to 15 minutes and 17 seconds here. Um, and this is the timestamp. So that is how we're going to actually get the timestamp. Now we have to make this to complete this protopy. We need to make this timestamp here actually change as well. And that's not going to be too hard because we've completed the hard work of the formula. I went in a little bit of depth on how you actually, um, how you actually, uh, let's get this. I went into depth about why the formula works the way it does so that you guys could understand it. So now what we're gonna do is take the video preview stamp and say text. And that just means it's just gonna copy and paste. So you see the video playtime 502, it's now going to be directly synced to this because we have the formula just saying 
input and paste text from video preview as it changes. So now let's see that. Be careful, just look right here and you'll see it. So let's see how that changes. Great. So that's how you actually create a video timestamp uh, given the constraints of the width of the player. Um, I appreciate you watching this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I would appreciate a like on the video if you liked it. I've also put the formula for that calculator uh, for the timestamp in the description below. And yeah, feel free to check out the protopie as well. Anyways, signing off. So you guys enjoy. Cheers.